Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. This is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchitanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karati, bari bharti, sanjari harti, lilaya. Vishvesham satchidanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karati, bari bharti, sanjari harti, lilaya. We are studying the Tatpurusha Samasa and its details. This is a very important type of Samasa in Sanskrit and we have already studied several features of this Tatpurusha Samasa. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be summed up in the form of an equation in this manner. So we have X and Y, two different entities, X having different and independent meaning, Y also having different and independent meaning. X is a different word, independent word, and Y is also an independent, different word. X has independent and different accent, so also does Y. The important point is that these two independent entities, they are semantically related. The plus signs indicate, the plus sign indicates this particular semantic interrelation. Now, the speaker of Sanskrit thinks about merging these two elements together and generating a different output altogether, which is XY. Now, XY is one word denoting one meaning, having one accent. So, there is a Karthi Bhava, which has got these three features, namely Aikarthya, Aikapadya, and Aikasvarya. Now, XY is written in a particular manner where Y is highlighted with the bold to show that in the Tatpurusha Samasa, it is the second member or the Uttarapada which becomes the head, which means that when XY is to be linked with any other external element in the sentence, it will be done only through this head Y. And when this does not happen, but still we have the compounding taking place, we call such compounds as asamartha samasas. Then we are studying the vibhakti tatpurushas. Amongst them we have already studied tritiya, tritiya, chaturthi, panchami and saptami. We said that that Vitiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha is stated by the sutras beginning with Dvitiya Shrita Tita Patita Gatatya Stap Prapta Padnehi and so on. Trutiya Tatpurusha is stated by the sutras beginning with Trutiya Tatkratar Thena Guna Vachanena. Chaturthi Tatpurusha is stated by just one sutra Chaturthi Tadar Tartha Balihita Sukha Rakshitaihi. Panchami Tatpurusha is stated by a few sutras beginning with Panchami Bhayena. Saptami Tatpurusha is stated by the sutras beginning with Saptami Shaundaihi. We also stated that the Vibhakti Tatpurusha underlies the 
the Vibhakti Tatpurusha highlights the fact that the Samasa theory is based on the Karaka theory. There are certain cases where Panini has not prescribed any Vibhakti, but he has directly, explicitly prescribed a compound where the tradition has to infer that due to the prescription of a compound, there has to be some provision for the vibhakti to be added to that particular pratipadika. Now we are studying the Shashti Tatpurusha and we said that there is only one sutra which prescribes this Shashti Tatpurusha. That sutra is Shashti. Then we have a number of exceptions, number of negations where Shashti Tatpurusha does not work. We have already seen in the Nirdharani. We also saw Urana Guna Suhitartha Sadavya Yatavya Samanadi Karanina. Now we will study in this lecture some more negations. First, let us study Ktena Cha Puja Yam 2 to 12. There are three Padas in this particular Sutra 2 to 12. The first is Ktena which is instrumental singular, which means with the word having kta suffix. Cha means and, it is an indeclinable, and pujayam is seven slash one in the sense of worship, in the sense of respect. Words continued are sup and saha supa. And of course, samartha padavidhi is obviously there. The other words continued are na and also shashti which is in one slash one. On the whole, the meaning of the sutra is the following. And, this is the meaning of ch, and any shashtyanta subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta having a pratipadika that ends in the suffix kta when the compound means worship. When the suffix ta means worship. I repeat, and any shashtyanta subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta having a pratipadika that ends in the suffix ta which is added in the sense of worship. Now the question is, by default, the suffix the is added to a verbal root to denote past tense and also karma or bhava. Past tense is stated by the sutra bhute and the meaning karma and bhava is stated by the sutra tayoreva kritya kta now, there is an additional meaning of puja which is stated by this suffix ta in accordance with the sutra mati buddhi puja arthe bhyascha. Kta suffix is stated here to denote the present tense. And by 2.367, ktasya cha vartamane, shashti vibhakti is stated after a word which is interrelated with such a kta suffix. Now, the tradition says that even if this sutra mentions only puja, other meanings mentioned in conjunction with the meaning puja in 3 to 188, namely mati and buddhi, are also to be considered as conditions for this negation. So we have Radnyam Mataha, Radnyam Buddhaha, and Radnyam Pujitaha. So Radnyam Mataha means one who is being thought about by the kings. Radnyam Buddhaha is one who is being known by the kings. And Radnyam Pujitaha is one who is being worshipped by the kings. So now, in this case, even if these two words are semantically related, 
because kings are thinking about somebody kings are knowing somebody and they are worshiping somebody so there is semantic interrelation and the scope of shashti is very much there and still the sanskrit speakers have not thought of combine combining and compounding these elements together and that is what gets reflected in the form of this particular sutra which says ktena ch pujayam there is no shashti samasa the next sutra negating the shashti samasa is adhikarana vachina ch there are two padas in the sutra adhikarana vachina and ch adhikarana vachina is instrumental singular which means when a word denotes substratum that is adhikarana vachin so adhikarana vachina means with the suffix kt which denotes substratum so it is the suffix kt whose meaning is mentioned in the word adhikarana vachi that is adhikarana ch means and and this is an indeclinable words continued are sup sahasupa samartha padavidhi na from na nirdharane and shashti of course these are the words continued so the meaning of the sutra is the following and any shashtyanta subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta having a pratipadika that ends in the suffix kt meaning substratum adhikarana i repeat and any shashtyanta subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta having a pratipadika that ends in the suffix kt meaning substratum now by default as we have seen earlier the suffix kt denotes past tense and also karma or bhava but now we have sutra 3476 तोधिकरणे च द्रव्यगति प्रत्यवसानार्थेभ्य विच सेज दैट कृत सफिक्स ऑल्सो डिनोट्स अ सब्सट्रैटम इफ इट फॉलोज और इफ इट इज एडेड टू द वर्बल रूट्स मीनिंग द्रव्य स्टेबिलिटी गति मोशन एंड प्रत्यवसान ईटिंग and then by the sutra 2368 adhikarana vachanascha shashti vibhakti is stated after a word which is interrelated with such a kta suffix added in the sense of adhikarana so we have examples like idam esham asitam here we have the verbal root as to which the suffix ta is added now this suffix ta means substratum so asita means a place where the action of sitting happens idam esham asita means this is the substratum of their sitting now asa indicates the meaning to sit which can be grouped under dravya dravya means stability similarly idam esham yatam so in this case the word yat is derived from the verbal root ya with the krit suffix t added to it in the sense of adhikarana so yat means the substratum of their going probably the road so the meaning of idam esham yat means this is the substratum of their going ya means gati or motion and then finally we have idam esham bhuktam in this case this means this is the substratum of their eating probably a plate now there is a verbal root bhuja meaning to eat and the suffix t is added to it this suffix t means adhikarana or substratum 
Now the point is that Esham Asitam, Esham Yatam and Esham Bhuktam these are semantically interrelated elements. And so Shashti 2 to 8 would prescribe the compounding process to take place between these elements. But the current Sutra 2 to 13 negates such a process and so there is no compounding. So the sentence remains as it is Idam Esham Asitam, Idam Esham Yatam and Idam Esham Bhuktam. The next sutra negating Shashti Tatpurusha is Karmanicha. There are two, two padas in the sutra, Karmani and Cha. Karmani means in the sense of object. Cha refers to and. Cha is an indeclinable. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa and of course Samartha Padavidhihi. Na from the Nirdharane and Shashti from Shashti. So the meaning of the Sutra is and any Shashtyanta Subanta denoting an object is not compounded with any other interrelated Subanta when both object and agent are mentioned in the sentence in Shashti. I repeat and any Shashtyanta Subanta denoting an object is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta when both act, object and agent are mentioned in the sentence in the shashti vibhakti. Now as we know shashti vibhakti is primarily stated in the sense of shesha. Shesha means karaka pratipadikartha vyatiriktaha sambandha sambandha in general and other than karaka and pratyavadikartha. However, there are a few sutras which state that the shashti vibhakti is added in the sense of a few karakas. So for example, kartru karmanoho kruti. In association with the krit suffix, the shashti vibhakti is stated to denote karta as well as karma. Now, the second sutra is Ubhaya Karmani. This sutra says that when a Krit suffix is stated and when you have Karta and Karma both eligible to take the Shashti Vibhakti, add the Shashti Vibhakti after the word denoting karma, ubhaya praptau karmani. Now the tradition has clearly stated that kartru karmano hokruti is not the subject matter of this particular sutra namely 2 to 14. However, ubhaya praptau karmani is the subject matter of this particular sutra 2 to 14 karmani cha. And there are reasons which we need not go into the details of right now, which the tradition has put forward. But this is the decision they have reached and this is the conclusion they have arrived at. And in accordance with this, if we have a sentence, Ascharyu Gavam Dohaha Agopalakena. Now in this case we have Dohaha, which is derived by the which is derived from the verbal suffix duha meaning to milk by adding the suffix a and so this a suffix is krit suffix and so and it means bhava now in this case go is the karma and agopalaka is the karta so now there is ubhaya prapti karta as well as karma they both are in association with the krit and kridanta word. Now, in this case, Ubhaya Praptau Karmani applies and adds the Shashti Vibhakti after the word denoting karma. So, Gavam is the Shashti and Gopa Agopalaka then is expressed 
in the tritiya vibhakti so we have ascharyo gavam dohaha agopalakena the tritiya vibhakti in agopalakena expresses the karta gavam is the shashti with the expression of karma and so on the meaning of the sentence is indeed it is surprising that the milking of the cows was done by a non cow herd agopalaka now in this case the shashti vibhakti will be compounded in accordance with the sutra shashti in general but this sutra karmanicha states that this shashti is not compounded there is a negation because there is ubhaya prapta karmani applying and so such a shashti is not compounded so there is no compounding then we have the sutra trijaka abhyam kartari this is 2215 trijaka abhyam kartari another sutra negating the shashti tatpurusha compound there are two padas in the sutra first one is trijaka abhyam this is instrumental dual 3/2 with words ending in the suffixes trij and ak they are stated by a 31133 namely nval and trij nval trichau so trij stands for trij and nval is the form of ak stated in the sutra the other word stated in the sutra is kartari this is the saptami vibhakti of kartru and it means in the sense of an agent karta words continued are sup sahasupa and samartha padavidhi similarly in na and also shashti so the meaning of the overall sutra is the following and any shashtyanta subanta denoting agent is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta whose pratipadika ends in the suffix trij and ak i repeat and any shashtyanta subanta denoting agent is not compounded with any other interrelated subanta whose pratipadika ends in the trij suffix and also ak suffix for example we have bhavatah shayika bhavatah asika and bhavatah agragamika these are the examples so bhavatah shayika means your action of sleeping here the verbal root she is there to which is added the suffix ak and this ak stands for the action so now bhavatah asika has got as as the root and ak as the suffix this means your action of sitting similarly bhavatah agragamika which means your action of surging ahead in all these cases bhavatah is the shashti denoting an agent and the other words end in the ak suffix now there is the possibility of compounding as far as the sutra shashti is concerned but there is no compounding because of the statement stated in this particular sutra namely trijaka abhyam kartari now trij means agent and therefore it cannot have shashti denoting agent in the same sentence and so its mention here is redundant and so only examples of shashti meaning karta are stated here with reference to the suffix ak even though we said earlier that truj and ak are stated in the sense of karta by the sutra nval trichau the suffix ak is also stated in some other senses like bhava which is visible over here 
Now the word Trij continues in the next sutra negating the Shashti Tatpurusha compound. That is Kartari Cha 2 to 16. Now Kartari Cha has got two Padas, Kartari and Cha. Kartari is 7-1 in the sense of an agent. Cha means and, an indeclinable. Words continued are Sup, Sahasupa, and of course Samartha Padavidhi, Na as well as Shashti are also continued. So the overall meaning of the Sutra is the following. And any Shashtyanta Subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated Subanta whose Pratipadika ends in the Trach and Aka suffixes denoting an agent. The meaning is, once again, and any Shashtyanta Subanta is not compounded with any other interrelated Subanta whose Pratipatika ends in the Trach and Aka suffixes denoting an agent. Here are the examples. Apam Srashta Puram Bhut Bhetta Odanasya Bhojakaha and Saktunam Payakaha Now, Srashta and Bhetta these are the words having the suffix trich at the end in the sense of karta. Bhojaka and payaka are the words having the suffix aka at the end meaning karta. So apam srashta means one who releases waters. Puram bhetta means one who destroys the cities. Odanasya bhojakaha means one who eats rice. Saktunam payakaha means one who drinks barley soup. Now, Apam Srashta, Puram Bhetta, Udanasya Bhojakaha and Saktu Naam Payakaha, in all these cases, suffixes Trich and Aka are used in the sense of an agent and Shashti is used in their relation. So this is the scope of application of the Sutra Shashti doing the Shashti Tatpurusha compound. But this is what is negated by the Sutra Kartari Cha to 16 and the speakers of Sanskrit have not thought of compounding these two elements which gets reflected in the formation of this particular sutra and so there is no compounding. After having seen all these negations, there is one sutra that remains to be studied which is Yajakadivishya. Please note the number of this sutra. This is 2 to 9, which comes immediately after Shashti. So before stating the negations, Panini states this particular sutra, Yajakade Vishya. 2 to 8 is the prescription of Shashti Satpurusha compound, and immediately after it, this sutra comes in. The purpose of this sutra will be clear now. There are two padas in the sutra, Yajakade Bhihi, and Ch. Yajakadi Bhi is 3 slash 3, meaning with the words Yajaka, etc. Ch is an indeclinable, meaning and. Words continued are Sup, Sahasupa, Samartha, Padavidhi, and Shashti. Shashti is 1, 1, therefore it is an Upasarjana, and also therefore there is a Purva Nepata. Now the meaning of the sutra is. Any Shashtyanta Subanta is compounded with any other interrelated Subanta which appears in the group of words beginning with Yajaka. I repeat, and any Shashtyanta Subanta is compounded with any other interrelated Subanta which appears in the group of words beginning with Yajaka. So here we have Brahmanasya Yajakaha and Kshatriyasya Yajakaha. Now Yajaka is a word ending in the suffix Aka in the sense of Karta. And then this will become a subject of negation by the sutras that we have studied so far negating the Shashti Tatpurusha compound. But this sutra tells us an exception to these negations and it reinforces the Shashti Tatpurusha compound in a limited domain. So this is an exception to exceptions. 
So Brahmana se yajakaha gets compounded as Brahmana yajakaha and Kshatriya se yajakaha gets compounded as Kshatriya yajakaha. Similarly, we have some other statements added to this particular sutra. Tatsthaischa gunaihi shashti samasyate. So previously we saw that a guna is not compounded with the dravya that it resides in. But now, if that guna resides in the dravya, then such a shashti gets compounded. That is the point. Tatsthaischa gunaihi shashti samasyate. And any shashtyanta subanta is compounded with any other interrelated subanta which denotes the quality that stays in that dravya. Earlier it was different, now this is different. So chandanasya gandha and kapithasya rasaha, this gets compounded. Similarly we have another statement, gunattarena taralopascha iti vaktavyam. What this means is, and any sushashtyanta subanta is compounded with any other interrelated subanta whose pratipadika ends in the suffix tara added to a quality denoting word and the suffix tara should be deleted. This is an exception to the nirdharani. So we have sarvesham shveta taraha. So somebody is picked up amongst many on account of that person being more fair, Sarvesham Shveta Taraha, an animal probably, Sarvesham Shveta Taraha. And there we drop, we delete the suffix Tara and we get the compound Sarvashvetaha. Similarly, Sarvesham Shukla Tara and we have Sarvashukla Gauhu as the compounded output. So this is also an exception to the negation and reinforcing the Shashti Tatpurusha compound. To summarize, the purpose of collecting the group of words in Yajaka Devishcha is to state exceptions to the negation rules and reinforcing the positive statement of the prescription of Shashti Tatpurusha compound and that is why it is stated immediately after Shashti. Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa proves to be a big basket owing to the varied and nuanced usage of Shashti in Sanskrit. These are the texts referred to. Thank you for your patience.